130 years ago, the world was engulfed in a terrible war, a never-ending chaos that took countless lives. It was during this time that a dark and mysterious group known as the Silent Night made their first appearance, spreading fear and despair across the lands. As the world became darker and people began to lose hope, a group of powerful martial artists from the Miriam world decided to unite to bring back peace. These martial masters came together to form the Central Heavenly Alliance, a coalition of the strongest fighters dedicated to protecting the people to defend against the relentless attacks of the Silent Night. They decided to create a special sect, a group solely focused on holding back the enemy. They chose Book Jin Hu, a renowned martial artist, to be the first leader of this new sect, which was named the Northern Heavenly Sect. With the formation of the Northern Heavenly Sect, the Central Heavenly Alliance pledged their full support. They provided the sect with countless martial techniques and spiritual elixirs, allowing them to grow stronger and push back against the Silent Night. Over time, the Northern Heavenly Sect became a powerful force, respected by all, attracting thousands of skilled martial artists to join their ranks. As time passed, leadership of the sect changed hands. After Buck Jin Hu, Nam Moon San became the second generation leader, followed by Yu Kuang Yeon as the third. The Northern Heavenly Sect continued to be a formidable force, with its leaders and members highly respected across the land. We then find ourselves witnessing a crucial battle scene. On one side stand our five heroes from the Northern Heavenly Sect, led by the fourth generation leader, Jin Quan Ho, known as the Great Wall of the North. Alongside him are the four pillars of the sect, each a master of their unique skills. Zhou Qian Wu, known as the Demon Fist, is a man with unmatched strength in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Kaiyong Musaeng, the Tempest Storm, is a master of weapon skills. Yan Qian Hejiawa, the cursed ghost blade wields his sword with unmatched expertise, and Jay Hayuk Shim, the ruler of Iron Blood, commands a whip with deadly precision. As the battle begins, Jin Quan Ho and his team launch themselves at the enemies with incredible speed and skill. Jin Quan Ho himself demonstrates his prowess by cutting down his foes with a single, powerful slash, showcasing the might of the Northern Heavenly Sect. These warriors played a critical role in defending their land against the Silent Knight keeping them at bay for many years. But one day, as if reaching their limit against the formidable Northern Heavenly Sect, the Silent Knight vanished without a trace. However, this disappearance marked the beginning of a new tragedy. We are then introduced to a young boy named Jin Mu Wan, only 13 years old, with tears streaming down his face. He cries out for his father, Jin Quan Ho, who kneels before him bloodied and defeated. The mighty leader, once the stronghold against the darkness, has fallen. Surrounding them are many powerful figures, all gathered against Jin Quan Ho, the leader of the Northern Heavenly Sect. Among those present are the Nine Skies, a group of powerful and untouchable figures who hold immense power in the Miriam world. They accuse Jin Quan Ho of betraying them to the Silent Knight, the Seeker of Knowledge. One of the Nine Skies challenges Jin Quan Ho, questioning his loyalty and accusing him of deceit. He claims that even the four pillars of the Northern Heavenly Sect Zhou Qian Wu, Kang Musaeng, Yan Qian Hajiaoa, and Jai Hayok Shim have testified against their leader. Jin Quan Ho is shocked and heartbroken. He trusted these men, fought alongside them for decades and considered them his brothers. Now they have turned against him. He realizes he is truly alone. Turning to his young son, Jin Mu Wan, Jin Quan Ho understands that there is no way out. Even if he tried to fight, the forces against him are too strong, he decides to comply with the wishes of the Central Heavenly Alliance. In a final act of resignation, he declares, starting today the Northern Heavenly Sect shall disband. All disciples must leave and find new homes elsewhere. This is my last order as the leader of the Northern Heavenly Sect. With a heavy heart, Jin Quan Ho makes one last plea. He asks the Nine Skies to promise that they will not harm his son, Jin Mu Wan, who has already suffered so much, losing his mother and growing up in the harsh northern lands. The leader of the Nine Skies reluctantly agrees, recognizing that the mood among the gathered leaders would not allow for further bloodshed. In a heartbreaking moment, Jin Quan Ho turns back to his son one last time. Mu Wan, my son. Forgive me, he says, before taking his own life with his sword. Jin Mu Wan rushes to his father's side, but it is too late. The boy is left alone, sitting next to his father's lifeless body, with tears in his eyes and anger in his heart. The Northern Heavenly Sect, once a mighty force created to protect the people from the Silent Night, has now been betrayed by those they trusted most. Jin Quan Ho, the fourth generation leader, has fallen, leaving behind a son who must now find his own way in a world filled with treachery and pain. The scene shifts forward three years. Jin Mu Wan wakes up to find himself hanging from a wooden log. As he regains consciousness, he sees a group of men in front of him. One of them, a bearded man with a fierce expression named Jang Pei San, taunts him, 
demanding to know where the weapons and martial techniques of the Northern Heavenly Sect are hidden. Jin Mu Wan, however, only laughs in response, refusing to give them what they want. Angered by his defiance, Zhang Pei San threatens to throw him to the wolves or kill him outright if he does not cooperate. But Jin Mu Wan remains strong, even as they inflict pain on him, cutting off his finger. He reminds them of the promise made between his father and the Central Heavenly Alliance, a promise that should have protected him. With tears in his eyes and anger in his voice, Jin Mu Wan stands firm, even in the face of torture and betrayal. The legacy of the Northern Heavenly Sect may have been tainted, but the spirit of its last leader lives on in his son, who is determined to survive and seek justice for the wrongs done to his family. We see how Jin Mu Wan ended up in his current situation, with a flashback showing people leaving and a voice narrating the Silent Night had completely erased their presence from the world, and the world began to believe they had finally disappeared. Since the Northern Heavenly Sect, the frontline defense against the Silent Night had been disbanded, with the Silent Knight's sudden reappearance, the Central Heavenly Alliance used this as a justification to send mercenaries to watch over the Northern Heavenly Territory, but that was just a cover. Their real purpose was to keep an eye on a specific individual, to make sure he never learned the martial arts of the Northern Heavenly Sect or sought revenge. Their true objective was to guard him. That person was none other than Jin Mu Wan, the last living descendant of the Northern Heavenly Sect and the only son of the former sect leader. The previous guards had reported that Jin Mu Wan had only been allowed to read books by his father, Jin Quan Ho, and had no knowledge of martial arts. The Central Heavenly Alliance and the Great Four of the Northern Heavens had taken anything related to martial arts. They had searched the place thoroughly but found nothing hidden. Jin Mu Wan, now 16, sits alone on his bed. After a year of doing nothing, he decided to learn a trade to earn a living and began practicing blacksmithing. Zhang Pei San, the captain of the Central Heavenly Alliance's third mercenary group, finds it hard to believe that the son of the Great Northern Heavenly Sect would choose blacksmithing. But he also wonders if there could still be hidden martial scrolls somewhere. He thinks if there aren't any more, there's no reason for them to waste their time there for the next three years. As Jin Mu Wan observes the new guards moving inside his territory, he thinks to himself, they must be the new guards. Looks like things are going to get annoying again. Jin Mu Wan heads to the home of 10,000 spirits, a place that once held over 10,000 Confucius and martial scrolls. But everything had been taken by the great four of the Northern Heavens sword techniques by the Cursed Ghost Blade, Yan Qian Haji Obie foot techniques by the Tempest Storm, Kyong Musang fist techniques by the Demon Fist, Cho Qian Wu and refined QI cultivation by the Iron Blood Ruler, Jae Hyuk Shim. Many of the sect's disciples had followed these powerful figures, and each of them played a part in destroying the Northern Heavenly Sect to gain power in the mainland. Sitting by his window, Jin Mu Wan realizes, I've become utterly alone. No, I've been abandoned. He drifts into a dream where he sees the death of his father, Mu Wan, my son. You are the leader of the Northern Heavenly Sect, Jin Mu Wan calls out father as he looks up. He sees the nine skies, and the sight terrifies him, waking him up from his dream in a stressed state. The next morning, after breakfast, he heads to work as a blacksmith, reflecting, outside of the Northern Heavenly Sect, no life exists within a thousand meters in all directions. One could say that time has stopped and the current destroyed state of the Northern Heavenly Sect is a reflection of my own state. After a day's work, Jin Mu Wan sits at the home of 10,000 spirits, watching the sunset, thinking, this is who I am. This is the current me. What a sorry state you're in, Jin Mu Wan. As night falls, he heads back to his room, realizing I didn't climb to diminish my weakness. I climbed to build and solidify the foundation of my will. If I falter now, everything my father did and the life he gave up would all be wasted. The scene shifts back to the present, where Jin Mu Wan's finger is just cut off. Seo Mu Sang, one of the mercenaries, sighs, did we really have to go that far? He's just a mere child. Jin Mu Wan, in pain, cries out the nine skies, did you forget the promise my father and the Central Heavenly Alliance made Jang Pei San, confused, asks, the nine skies, Central Heavenly Alliance. Jin Mu Wan continues, I doubt you're allowed to act like this. The Northern Heavenly Sect's martial scrolls and artifacts? Do you really think the Central Heavenly Alliance would have left anything behind? They swept this place clean? You're planning to kill me and go back to the mainland? Then go ahead and try. Even, though they're disciples of the Great Four of the Northern Heavens, the only reason they joined them was that they were forced three years ago. Some loyal disciples of the Northern Heavenly Sect remain. Do you think they'll let you get away with it? They will immediately know the difference between suicide and murder and will not hesitate to come after your lives. To their amazement, Jang Pei San and the others react, Ah, shit! The Great Four of the Northern Heavens. Jin Mu Wan keeps speaking. Did you think the previous guards were all ignorant fools? They had the same idea as you. 
Didn't you wonder why they did nothing but silently wait for the past three years? Zhang Pei San, drawing his sword, yells, How dare you talk back to us, but Seo Musang stops him, saying, It's best that we let him go. What that child just said holds some truth. Haven't we already searched this place? There are no more martial scrolls or valuable artifacts here. Zhang Pei San reluctantly agrees, Let that bastard go. Jin Mu Wan, still defiant, says, Let me be clear. This place is my home, and you are intruders. So from now on, I expect you to behave properly as guests. If you do, I'll overlook what you did to me today. As Zhang Pei San walks away, he warns Oi Kido. I'm letting you go for now, but if you start doing anything suspicious, the Central Heavenly Alliance and the Great Four of the Northern Heavens will give me permission to kill you. Mark my words. Released from the wooden log, Jin Mu Wan takes a handkerchief from Seo Mu Sang to stop his bleeding. As Seo Mu Sang leaves, Jin Mu Wan thinks to himself, the loyal disciples of the Northern Heavenly Sect, loyal disciples, my ass, if they were truly loyal. They would have come and rescued me from this hellhole already. No, I'm sure they're waiting for me to die. Do you think anyone still cares about a ruined sect? Nobody will care if I live or die. No, I'm sure they're waiting for me to die. The next morning, inside the home of 10,000 spirits, Jin Mu Wan walks around, thinking, it's true that everything was taken away from the Northern Heavenly Sect, sitting on top of the spirit home. He mutters, ack, ouch, damn. But then he feels a spark of hope. But the heart of the Northern Heavenly Sect is still alive. The greatest secret of the Northern Heavenly Sect, a secret not even the four great pillars of the Northern Heavens know about. Sitting on the tower, Jin Mu Wan gazed out at the Northern Heavenly Sect and had a realization the ultimate martial scroll of the Northern Heavenly Sect is in fact the Northern Heavenly Sect itself. As the sun began to set in the east, the ruined walls of the Northern Heavenly Sect cast long shadows on the ground. These walls were known as the Wall of 10,000 Shadows when sunlight drenched these walls mysterious patterns transformed into writings in an ancient language from the Lower Moon Kingdom. The Wall of Ten Thousand Shadows was built by the first sect leader, Buck Jin Hu, and contained all of his writings which continued through to the fourth generation sect leader, Jin Quan Ho. Because of this, Jin Mu Wan's father made him learn the language of the Lower Moon Kingdom from a young age instead of focusing on martial arts. To others, these writings might seem like mere ancient engravings, however they are meant for Jin Mu Wan alone to read. This is why it might appear as though he is wasting his time up here. He hopes the guards will continue to think that way, in fact, he needs them to. The teachings of the previous sect leaders are all recorded here. Jin Mu Wan knows he still has a long way to go before mastering the ultimate martial art of the Northern Heavenly Sect, the Gathering of the Ten Thousand Shadows. As long as he is under the watch of the Central Heavenly Alliance, he must keep everything hidden and wait patiently for the right opportunity. While he was still sitting on the tower, he spotted a horse cart approaching the sector. Jin Mu Wan went to see who it was and realized the person was Huang Chiu, a former warrior of the Northern Heavenly Sect. Mr. Huang, despite being the weakest warrior in the sect with only self-defense skills, was known for his unwavering loyalty and devotion. After leaving the sect, he worked as a wandering merchant and always did his best to bring supplies for Jin Mu Wan. Huang Chiu was a lonely orphan who had no martial talent, but was deeply grateful to the sect for accepting him and training him to protect himself. Seeing Huang Chiu now, Jin Mu Wan was pleased to see him again. Huang Chiu, despite his age and hardships, greeted Jin Mu Wan warmly, noting how much he had grown taller. Huang Chiu then expressed concern about an injury on Jin Mu Wan's finger, but Jin Mu Wan reassured him it was just an accident from blacksmithing. Jin Mu Wan was surprised by the amount of luggage Huang Chiu had brought. Huang Chiu explained that he couldn't let go of his past and continued to do everything he could for Jin Mu Wan, despite Jin Mu Wan's insistence that he should live for himself. Among the supplies, Jin Mu Wan noticed a thick winter blanket and a peculiar rock. Huang Chiu explained that he got the rock from Yuan Nam, where it was worshipped by a tribe as a sacred object until the tribe was massacred by the Broken Fists troop. Huang Chiu then informed Jin Mu Wan about the current events in Murim. The Broken Fists troop, led by the cruel and vicious demon fist Zhou Qian Wu, had settled in Yuan Nam. After betraying the Northern Heavenly Sect, the great four of the Northern Heavens each created their own martial forces. The cursed Ghost Blade, Yan Qian Habei, became the protectors of the Western Heavens the Tempest Storm. Kyung Musang formed the billowing clouds the Iron Blood Ruler. Jae Hyuk Shim built the Iron Castle in the North, and the Demon Fist created the Broken Fist's troop. Huang Chiu also mentioned a prominent martial artist named Dam Su Qian, who had challenged and defeated 93 out of 100 opponents in what was known as the 100-man challenge. Despite being only 18, 
Dam Su Qian had already gained a fearsome reputation and was heading north, causing concern among the local sects. As Huang Qiu prepared to leave, Jin Mu Wan expressed gratitude for his efforts. Huang Qiu promised to return after the winter, though he felt he wasn't able to do much for Jin Mu Wan. Jin Mu Wan assured him that he had done more than enough. As Huang Qiu left the sector, SEO Mu Sang approached Jin Mu Wan, informing him of upcoming visitors from the Central Heavenly Alliance and plans to repair the Hopian Palace. Jin Mu Wan, indifferent, instructed Seo Mu Sang to proceed as he wished. Returning to the tower, Jin Mu Wan found some dust on the floor. As he turned, a knife was suddenly pressed against his neck by a disguised woman. She demanded to know who he was. Jin Mu Wan, confused and defensive, revealed that he was the owner of the place. The woman then identified herself, but before she could say more, she collapsed, dropping the knife. Jin Mu Wan was stunned when he saw a woman lying on the ground, covered in blood and injuries. He could hardly comprehend what was happening. His first concern was whether she was a threat or if he needed to help her. Checking her closely, he realized she was still breathing. In a state of panic, he decided he had to get her back to his home as quickly as possible. As he ran with the injured woman, he couldn't help but wonder why such a dire situation was unfolding before him. Upon reaching his home, Jin Mu Wan carefully examined the woman's injuries. He discovered a wound in her left shoulder, which seemed to be poisoned. This realization made him anxious, as it appeared she had been attacked with a lethal poison. In a moment of clarity, he remembered he had an antidote for internal protection, the last one he had. The memory of Huang Chiu's words echoed in his mind, I'm making a big sacrifice by using this. If anything happens to the young master, I'm sure this will come in handy. Jin Mu Wan had been given the antidote as a precaution, and now it seemed it was his only hope for this woman. With urgency, he began administering the antidote. He inserted needles near her poisoned wound, working meticulously to ensure he did everything he could. After a tense few moments, he finished the procedure and sighed in relief, noting that her bleeding had stopped. He was still unsure about her identity and why she had appeared in such a condition. Days later, the woman woke up suddenly her shoulder aching. She looked around in confusion and wondered who had helped her. Jin Mu Wan, from the kitchen, casually mentioned that he was almost done preparing porridge for her. As she saw him, Memories of their past encounter flashed before her she had previously tried to harm him with a knife before collapsing. Now, seeing him again, she was surprised that he had taken care of her. Jin Mu Wan, noticing her confusion, told her he thought she might never wake up since she had been unconscious for three days. She was bewildered and asked why someone like him would care for her. Jin Mu Wan explained that he didn't know if she was an assassin or just an unfortunate passerby, but he couldn't bear to let someone die in front of him. He emphasized that he never wanted to witness death in his home again. The woman, reflecting on his words, began to think that perhaps his intentions were genuine. Despite her initial suspicions, she couldn't sense any hostile QI from him, leading her to believe he might indeed be helping her out of goodwill. Jin Mu Wan then reminded her to eat the porridge he had prepared and to take care of herself. He pointed out some clothes and food she could use during her stay and left her with the promise to be next door if she needed anything. The woman, now identified as Yun Ha Seol, resolved to recover her internal energy and deal with the remaining poison as best as she could. She pondered why Jin Mu Wan was going out of his way for someone like her. Despite her uncertainty, she knew she needed to recover quickly. As she worked to draw out the poison from her body, she felt the antidote's effect waning. The poison was proving to be more resistant than expected, making her task increasingly difficult. Exhausted and weakened, Yun Ha Seol collapsed from the effort. She was on the brink of despair, regretting that she hadn't had the chance to properly thank Jin Mu Wan. Just as she was about to give up, a mysterious presence appeared from the roof, adding a new layer of intrigue to her already precarious situation. Jin Mu Wan, meanwhile, was reflecting on his decision to help her. He knew that allowing her to stay was a considerable risk, given her mysterious background. Yet, he couldn't shake the thought that her name, Yun Ha Seol, was quite fitting and that she was no ordinary person. As he observed her condition from a distance, he continued to worry about her well-being, hoping that she would recover soon and that he would understand more about her and her situation in due time. In the midst of a dramatic night, a mysterious figure descends from the rooftop and catches Yun Ha Seol as she begins to fall. With swift and precise actions, the figure presses on several of her pressure points, channeling energy into her body. The figure urges her to focus, guiding her to utilize her internal energy. Gradually, the poison in her shoulder starts to clear, and the figure reassures her that she is close to recovery. The figure reveals that the poison has been removed just in time, and that any delay would have led to her death. This enigmatic savior is introduced as Se Ryung, though their identity remains shrouded in mystery. Se Rung expresses remorse upon seeing Yun Ha Sol, 
acknowledging the failure to protect her and their master. Sai Ryong apologizes for being late, admitting that they did not anticipate finding Yun ha in such a place. Sai Ryong reveals that they have been injured and hiding but has recently located Yun ha Sai Ryong suggests that Yun ha stay hidden in the Northern Heavenly Sect to recover while they search for their master and promises to return with the master's orders. The scene shifts to a blacksmith's workshop where Jin Mu Wan is hard at work. He contemplates a cryptic message about a mysterious energy and the concept of shadows. This message speaks of an energy that will transform rules and unify all things under one light, while shadows will always linger. Jin Mu Wan reflects on the nature of the martial art he is learning, the gathering of the 10,000 shadows which has never reached its full potential. Despite the art's obscurity and the strict surveillance from the Central Heavenly Alliance, Jin Mu Wan is left with no choice but to continue his training. Jin Mu Wan takes a break from his practice, feeling hungry, and decides to head home. On his way, he encounters Yun Ha Siol, who marvels at the Northern Heavenly Sect. Jin Mu Wan greets her, noting that she appears better than before and invites her to join him for a meal. Yun Ha Siol, initially hesitant, accepts the invitation and enters his home, expressing her gratitude for his help. Jin Mu Wan is surprised by her thanks but reassures her to enjoy the meal, downplaying his own role. During dinner, Yun Ha Sol's stomach growls loudly, prompting Jin Mu Wan to reassure her that the food is safe. Yun Ha Sol questions why Jin Mu Wan hasn't inquired about her identity. Jin Mu Wan explains that he has a feeling that knowing more about her might spoil their interactions. Yun Ha Sol is taken aback by his response, but Jin Mu Wan insists on focusing on the meal rather than discussing her background. Later, Jin Mu Wan climbs to the top of a tower in the evening, contemplating his training and the mysterious Blade of Eternal Darkness, a deadly sword technique he plans to master. He reflects on the secrets of the Ten Thousand Shadows martial art and resolves to continue his training diligently. The next day, Jin Mu Wan resumes his blacksmith work and practices swordsmanship. As night falls, Yun ha concentrates on her internal energy while Jin Mu Wan is startled to find her sitting quietly for an extended period. Yun ha requests food, and Jin Mu Wan, frustrated by her persistent presence, questions why she hasn't returned home. Despite his irritation, he agrees to get her something to eat. As they leave for food, Yun ha notes that Jin Mu Wan, despite being the descendant of the Northern Heavenly Sect, lacks basic martial arts knowledge and seems to be wasting time blacksmithing. Jin Mu Wan, on the other hand, wonders about the mysterious figure who has been lingering around. Upon returning home, Jin Mu Wan and Yun Ha Seol share a meal together. Meanwhile, outside the sect, a pair of feet approaches, accompanied by a voice murmuring, so this is, the Northern Heavenly Sect. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content. Ring the bell so you never miss an update. Drop a comment below with your thoughts or questions we love hearing from you. Until next time, take care and stay awesome.